Time to make some fun. I left off on the Lance Air with this flap. It's been too long since I worked on it, but I've got some of the fiberglass reinforcements on the side of the ribs. I've got to trim those down a little bit because there's some sharp, you can't see it in the camera, but there's some sharp pieces sticking up here above the rib. So I'm going to just take this tool to knock the top of that off and get it back down to where the top will fit on it. And next step, I, both sides of this, the back side has to be reinforced with uh, two layers of fiberglass from the bottom to the back. And then the front side gets, gets three bid on the entire front all the way down. But it also gets seven additional pieces or seven bid at each hinge location. It gets a total of 10 bid or 10 layers at each hinge location on the outside and another two on the inside. So you got 12 layers plus what the, this rib already has a couple layers on either side. So, and the reason for that is because all of the, the force, the control rod for the flap is on the inside all the way down here. You're coming in like a, coming in on final uh, somewhere around 100 knots on this plane. That's a lot, of, a lot of force out here on the outside of that. You don't want that flap twisting at all in the wind. That is why there's so many layers along the front of that to make the front side of that flap as strong as it could be so it won't twist. Uh, I'm gonna make some noise now. A lot of people will just take an air hose and just blow this off just to clean it. But I don't like to do that because all that's doing is putting all that stuff in the air and then I'm breathing it in. So I don't really want to breathe in all those fiberglass particles and a little bit of carbon fiber stuff. Technically I should be wearing a mask when I do that. But. <clears throat> All right, now we gotta check the flap fit here. I've got to put 10 layers of fiberglass at each hinge location. Uh, day two where I was working on the flaps I want to explain just a little further about vacuum bagging this is a vacuum pump and it does exactly what um, you would expect it to do by the name it's a vacuum <laughs> I mean you literally could use a uh, vacuum cleaner to do vacuum bagging but eventually the motor would overheat and it's a lot louder so it's <laughs> It's not as much fun using a vacuum, but it does work because I have used it before. All right, so here's a better view of the vacuum pump. It's literally just an electric motor with a, a pumping mechanism on the end. It's got it's oil filled to keep it from getting too hot, and it's just creates a vacuum like a vacuum cleaner does. This over here, you can see, this is just uh, the vacuum line with a with a vacuum gauge on it. Measures in inches hg. Uh, and it has a trap in case you in case you're sucking fiberglass close to the line it'll go in here and drips the resin into this so that it won't get in the tube and go into the vacuum uh, pump, pump or vacuum motor there you come all the way back here We've got a nylon tubing on this and it's probably I don't know what do we got 40 feet of it or something Home Depot and then you have a vacuum port here. This is just a silicone fitting that this just pushes into. The whole purpose 
of vacuum bagging is that you want to suck all the extra resin out of the project you're working on. One, to make it lightweight, and two, so you don't get too many thick areas where, you, where you've put a bunch of layers of uh, cloth and resin down. It, the thickness will build up quick. So by sucking all the air out, it squeezes that down and pulls the resin out. Let's say less than 100 bucks, you can be set up with that. Now, let's take this one apart and see how this come out. Get some tools. Let me just start down here. Maybe this will. There we go. So you can see this. That's how it's supposed to work. Oh, there's a. I'll just take a piece off. So you can see here it sucked all of the extra resin out of this area and it soaked it right through this material. So this is the extra resin that gets thrown away. Instruction manual was written somewhere around 1989 or 90 for this airplane, so 30 years ago. Uh, you know, and you're following along because it gives you step by step. And they say to um, mount the hinges to this, put them on the wing, get the bottom of this flush. But then you go back in a later step when you're trying to finish the top of the flap, and then they have you add seven layers at the hinge locations plus the three for the full length. So you're adding 10 layers of fiberglass. In this case, I added a little bit of carbon fiber. Um, but you're thickening up where the actual hinge mounts on the inside of this surface. So now I have to go back and basically remount the hinges so that this isn't pushed down by that 10 layers because the hinge mounts on this surface. So now it really, it pushes this down, you know, exaggerated. It pushes this down below the wing. So now I have to go back and maybe build the surface up on the back of the wing to equal this so that this sits flush. So the hinge will bolt in there nice and flat. Check this one. Oh yeah, plenty of room here. Let's get those other three layers on and get it done. I am having fun. I may not smile a lot during this whole process because I'm focused and concentrating, but I'm having fun. <laughs> So that's what a good vacuum bagging looks like. Where the line goes in, how much it's suctioned down. I mean, I can't, I can't even budge that to pull it off. Nice, we have, I have 22 inches vacuum on that. What that translates to is about 11 pounds per square inch. All right, we're back in the shop with the Lance Air. I have a lot of homemade tools like this and like this long board. What else we got? Here's a sample of like sanding tools that I've just made up. Here's a piece of, I don't know, one and a half inch aluminum tubing. It's got a long strip. If you want a straight edge, that's where you're gonna get it. So it looks like my tape is coming loose, but you just tape a like a uh, emery strip over this or sanding strip on it and you get a perfect straight edge. Another one, just a board that I stapled some really coarse like 80 grit to for breaking stuff down fast. You want to get into a curve. It's a piece of plastic tubing. You just tape a piece of sanding stick on that. Hey, paint stick even works. And a good one, a really good one is soft foam. It's like pipe insulation with a, a sticky DA pad. You just slap it on there and you can 
squeeze it and massage it into a corner and it works perfect for getting some of the shapes on the airframe, you know, be transitions between the wing and the fuselage. This was perfect for that. More shop tools. These are weights off an old weight bench somebody was throwing out. So I grabbed a whole stack. I, I don't know, I've got 200 or more pounds of this stuff laying around and it's perfect for when you need it for jobs like this. Best thing is if you can gun sight this by looking down the thing, your eye is usually about as straight as you're gonna get. But if you don't trust your eyes, I would just get a, this is just a scale from a hardware store or somewhere. Do this and check for your high spots. So to put some value to the importance of taking notes, record keeping, keeping what I call a build log, um, I just print out some sheets in Excel. I keep track of the time, the date, and what I did. It's kind of important because when I started building these flaps, it was probably well over a year ago. And when you're building them, if you're looking at the print, it tells you how many layers of fiberglass are in each side of each rib and you know the, what the application is. You've got the blueprint here. You've also got the book, kind of smaller version of the blueprint, but it tells you the same thing. It's been a year. I forgot where I left off. So in order for me to make sure that I build it to print, I've got to go back and look at my notes and right here I can see apply two bid to the right hand flap rear side of the spar. I can see that I've already applied those two bid on the back side of the spar. Yesterday I was thinking I still had to do that. That's why it's good to keep a build log so you can keep track of your progress. Go back and check on something because with a project this size you're it's not going to be built overnight and you're going to forget some things and that's the last thing you want to do on an airplane is forget something. <laughs> This is a plan. This is my little spacer. It's a washer. They're all, they were all just around 70 thousandths. And four pieces of tape brings them up to 88, which is perfect because I wanted about 80 thousandths. By the time I clamp this down, it'll be nice and tight. <clears throat> so this is going to go in here and sit right where the end of the bar that angle iron can clamp down there just outside of the hinge area. So it gets the same setup on both ends of the hinge. A little spacer. Just put it outside of here. And I'll be able to see the blue tape to know where to clamp that, that angle iron down. So basically the angle iron will sit across there and bridge that gap to leave an 80 thousandths layer of fiberglass right there. Perfect the way I want it. All right, so I've mixed up more resin and some of that flox that I was talking about. It looks almost like peanut butter. <clears throat> and again, the flox is structural, so I'm just going to kind of put a layer down and we're going to sandwich this stuff in there with the hinge on top of it. All right, so this goes in and sets right on top of the spacers. Throw a couple clamps on here. <coughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Good morning. It's uh, day four, working out in the hangar on the Lance Air project. I added five layers of fiberglass cloth there and some flocks mixed with my epoxy. I put a little spacer in here on either side of the hinge and then put this straight edge and put it across two hinge locations so that my hinges stay flat to one another. I've got the outer done here, middle done here. I've got to shift this all down and do the last one here. That should cure up within an hour or so. And then I can clean all of these up and redrill the holes for the hinge screws. Mount the flap on there, make sure that I'm flush on the bottom now and um, just keep going from there. I did a little bit of work on the ailerons. Just kind of putting the, the push tubes and brackets in there. So I got those mounted last night. I've got to cut a slot for the, this tube to pass through. These still get weights mounted on the front to balance the ailerons. I have to do that balancing yet, but time to get busy, time to make some fun.